What's going on everyone? This is Ethan, the Games Adjuster, and today we are talking about the 3-5 to five player game, Chinatown. So Chinatown is a negotiation game, kind of an older game. I think the original came out in like 1999 maybe. This is the 2014, uh, I think, Z-Man reprint. And uh, it's all about negotiating and trading. The actual tagline is Chinatown, the art of trading. So let's go down to the table. We'll talk about how it plays, and then we'll come back here for some final thoughts. Here we go. To begin the game, players are going to get some of the starting pieces that will be markers on the board to indicate which building and lots that they own. They'll also be getting $50,000 in money with these $10,000 cards. And you have several different denominations here. You've got the 10s, 50s, 100s, and 200s. They all have the same back, so you can keep your money, money hidden. Um, but they have the different faces of presidents or important people in American history on the front. Uh, you also have a year marker to track the years. There are six total years in the game. And then you've got a stack of building tiles, or building cards rather, the first player marker, and then a bag of shop tiles. So each player is going to get one of these here player aids. This player aid not only breaks down the phases of the game, there are six phases in each year, but also on the back side is a breakdown of what you get in the different rounds. So let's start talking about these rounds. To begin the game, we're going to first deal out building cards. The number of cards that we'll deal out is equal to the highest number based on the player count of the year. So in this example, we have a four player game set up. So we're going back to this reference card here. We will deal out six building cards and then each player will keep four of them right there by my thumb. All right. So these building cards, pretty simple. We'll just pass these out to each of the players and they will select the four that they want. So here's our my selections. We've got 54, 58, those are probably pretty close, 37, 46, 79, 21. And these, of course, will correspond to the different locations on the board. So here we see 37. Uh, 21 looks like it's right here. We've got 79 down here, uh, 46, 54, and 58. Uh, 54 and 58, pretty close. They're right there. And then 46 is uh, actually just further up. All right, so I might say, you know what, I'm going to really try to get some of that block over there going. And I might go ahead and take, uh, let's see, let's go ahead and take 37 too. Why not? The remaining two will be discarded back onto the stack and then shuffled for the next round. And every player will do the same thing. So after every player has selected what they want to keep, we'll reveal them, starting with the first player, and we'll place those out. And the first player will be the person who most recently visited Chinatown. So we'll put those there. And we got another one here at 37, boom. And let's just say everybody put theirs out. So, ooh, someone's got one at 38. Uh, ooh, they got pretty lucky a couple together. Over here, we've got this player with their own fortuitous placement. Maybe something like that. And then we've got, ooh, someone's kind of monopolizing uh, the area there. Okay. So, now that we've kind of seated the board, everybody placed what they wanted to, we're also going to then draft some of these shop tiles out of this bag. And so, the number of shop tiles you draw is always going to be the red number on the card. So, if we look here in the first round, we're actually going to get six. In a four-player game, every round after that, we'll only get three. So, we'll grab these shop tiles, and we'll grab the six that we need, one, two, three, four, five, six. Every player would do that. We would pass the bag around. They can look at them, but they cannot reveal them to the other players. And then once everyone has grabbed their tiles, we will reveal them, and then we will start negotiating. So let's just say these are the tiles I have in front of me. As soon as we all reveal, we can all start real-time trading. You can trade tiles for tiles. You can trade money for tiles. You can trade lots for lots or lots for tiles or money for lots and tiles. Any combination of trades you can make during this part of the game. So I might say, hey, you know what, um, purple player, I see that you've got, you know, 50 over here. I really, really love that. How about I give you 37 and you can deal with the yellow player over here on 38. Okay, cool. Let's say we do that. Boom, we switch. Or, hey, you know, I've got this jewelry tile. Uh, I see you're collecting jewelry. Why don't you trade me 
your seafood and I'll give you the jewelry and 10,000 bucks. You can do whatever you want to trade until all trades have been made. After all trades have been made, then the players will go ahead and place out the tiles that they would like to place on the locations they have. So I might say, mm, you know, I've got a pretty good little line of businesses here. I might try to go for the gusto and go for something big. Let's go ahead and put an antique store there. And while this one's kind of by itself, I might fit a seafood there. So let's go ahead and put that over here. Uh, and then the other players would do the same thing. So if they had maybe, you know, the jewelry over here for the yellow player, assuming this was what tiles they had, maybe purple puts that. Again, these would be in front of their own players. I'm not using mine, but just as an example. So after everybody's placed what they want to place, normally it would be a lot more tiles. Then we're going to collect money. The amount of money that you collect is also on this little helper card here. So if we look at that again, any incomplete business with one tile is going to be 10,000. Incomplete with two tiles, connected orthogonally, not diagonally, would be 20,000. Uh, three tiles, we'll see 40, 60, and 80 for incomplete. Now, if you complete a business, so you'll notice these tiles have some numbers on them. So here's a restaurant tile. This is a business size of six, meaning I have to have six orthogonally adjacent tiles of restaurants to get uh, the full complete bonus here of 140,000. However, if I only had maybe five of these adjacent, it would be an incomplete of five worth 80,000. So you can see that six one would boost this up to be worth 60,000 more money. So there you go. Uh, whereas the tropical fish is only a four. And so to complete the four would be 80,000. And there again, it's you know, basically twice as much from 40 incomplete to 80 completed. So you really want to try to get these done. And you really want to try to specialize in certain uh, businesses that there are. Now these businesses, there are only three more than the number printed on each one. So for example, there are only seven total tropical fish in the bag. Uh, where some of the smaller businesses like the seafood here, there's actually two full sets because there are six, three, and three. So if you get in early enough on some of the smaller ones, you might be able to get a couple of them done, but really these bigger ones, anything that's four or more, you're only going to be able to have one full set in the game. So you really want to try to recognize when you think you might be able to do that and when you might need to bow out and perhaps leverage those resources you have to someone who's gotten further in that business so that you can maybe switch them out for a different business or perhaps more real estate on the board. Um, after the players have placed whatever tiles they want, they'll collect their income. So here I would have two incompletes of one tile each, so that's 10, 20. I would collect that from the bank. Every other player would do the same thing. And then we'd move the year marker up one round and repeat the process again until all six rounds are complete. After that, players will count up the money they have made throughout the game, and whoever has the most money is the winner. Okay, let's briefly talk storage. This one is very easy. So the game actually comes, at least my version anyways, with a French rule book. I have that at the very bottom here. I'm never going to pull that out. I don't speak French. But we'll put in the player board. Uh, I'm sorry, the game board. It's a four-fold board. Really good quality. It's good thickness. It's a black pack. It's nothing special. But it's functional, and I like it. Uh, we'll put the rule book on top of that. I've got all the shop tiles in the bag that came with the game. Kind of flatten that out a little bit. The miscellaneous player cards, there's also, again, some of these French ones here. You can kind of see that in commerce and incomplete, complete, all that stuff. Uh, building cards, money cards, and then all your player pieces. I think there's 35 of each one, perhaps. I think that's the number that's right. And we'll put all those in the box. And there you go. Very thin box, actually, which is fine. Good box. So now that we've done that, let's go up top and talk about it. Okay, there you go. So let's talk about it. We'll start with a the theme. I love the theme. I think it's very unique. Uh, it's a trading game. There's a lot of trading games. And I like the theme of this one. It's it's Chinatown. It's kind of um, the years, I think, is like the early 19 or late 1960s. And so, um, you know, it's all about the immigration population that was inhabiting Chinatown, kind of, you know, building and growing businesses and developing and kind of settling in. It's a really cool theme. And I don't know that they were, you know, trading, you know, as much as it is in this game, but I do like it's kind of got a little bit of a historical theme to it. 
and it's very unique, you know, so I really like the theme. Um, the production is pretty solid. It's nothing spectacular. The board is functional. It's just, you know, big city block with a bunch of numbers. The little shop tiles are fine. Um, they're not like amazing artwork, but there's cool stuff like tropical fish and jewelry and seafood houses and tea houses, photo shops, uh, restaurants, antiques, factories. Uh, I think that's pretty much all of them. So um, just cool stuff. Oh, flower shop too. Um, you know, there's only those handful of different factories, dim sum. There's not, uh, or different shops, not that many, but the artwork on them is fine and colorful and the numbers are easy to see. Uh, the tiles are good quality. The little tokens kind of look like sprees. They're kind of fun. I like those little plastic bits. Uh, the gear marker's fine. The first player token's fine. You know, everything is good. I wouldn't say there's anything that's like a flaw in the game. Um, maybe the money, actually. So I do appreciate that the money has the different... Uh, bases on it so you know 10,000 50 100 200 but there are also the different uh famous people's faces presidents and the like but um they're really kind of like the like exact same color which is kind of hard to tell apart like if you might get one stuck in there that's the wrong denomination you're just kind of picking from the pile players should sort that out beforehand so that could just be a player thing but it is pretty easy just to be like you know sticking them together maybe or getting the throwing away the wrong one, maybe you needed to spend a 10, you spend a 50 on accident. So maybe if they were just slightly different colors with the same back, that would have been better as opposed to all the same back, which is fine, but all the same kind of front, just the number and face slightly different. So minor nitpick there, but like I said, overall, I think the production is fine. Nothing amazing, but nothing really to complain about other than maybe just the money. Uh, the rules are very simple. It's not a long rule book. Um, that's really a more of a above the table kind of game as opposed to a heavy mechanisms kind of game. It's really just card drawing, drafting, discarding, playing, drawing from the bag, playing, nego negotiating. That's it. And then rinse repeat. So there's not a lot of rules to mess up. Um, you may want to let players know as part of the gameplay just to be careful with the deals they make. Now if you make the deal and you agree to the deal, it is binding. But some of the deals people might try to make can be less than ideal. Like, let's say I'm dealing for a future favor, which you can do. You might say, hey, you know, I'll trade you this dim sum now, but you need to give me the next two tropical fish you draw. That's cool, and that might work out and pay off the very next round, but it might never pay off, and you need to be aware of that. Also, paying or promising really the future lots is really a little trickier and probably I would advise against just because there's no guarantee they'll draw the lot but also they could get into a situation where let's say you know you're drawing five lots you can only keep three in the latter rounds two through six of the four player game and in the first round you might have said hey you know Sally I will if you promise to give me lot two if you draw it I will you know make this trade well who's to say Sally ever admits to getting lot two in that situation the shot tiles you're going to draw them flip them over that's it but the cards you will discard. So you may just want to caution players. It's not, again, not necessarily a rules issue as more as a, just a kind of an understanding of what you probably should be negotiating with. Uh, that kind of future favor may not always pay out because it's kind of hard to, to track whether or not someone is not abiding by that. So there's that. But uh, yeah, you know, getting more into the gameplay now. I love the gameplay. I love the negotiating. I just love how fun and, you know, casual it is and just exciting and I mean I know it's kind of contradictory but it's just you can be kind of laid back while you're playing the game it's not a real heady game you do still need to make sure you're accounting right so you don't want to over extend yourself with monies and offers and shop tiles and things like that that you can't really profit off of in the long run and so you do need to know when when is the tipping point of you know making a fair trade getting something out of it and maybe again losing the trade not realizing it until three rounds later so um but i do i really enjoy that i love facilitating even you know three or four player trades hey you know sally if you give me this and gabby gets me that and then billy gets me this then i'll give jordan that and you can make these crazy trades and if everyone's agreeable you can really do some awesome things and maybe you know throughout the, all that you're ultimately making the most out of the deal so i really really enjoy that that's 
really the whole game is those moments and then knowing too, you know, when is something valuable to you? Because if in a certain situation you are offered maybe to trade, maybe you have a lot that uh, Billy really wants. Well, if you agree to something now, you might get more out of it than if let's say you get greedy and you don't agree to anything and then the next round Billy draws the tile right next to yours and he no longer needs yours. So your your tile went be, from being worth potentially a tropical fish and you know $10,000, let's say that was Billy's offer, to now being worth nothing because Billy doesn't need you anymore. So now you're going to have to leverage that into something else. Also, you need to, to kind of recognize when you should hold off on placing those shop tiles down or maybe when you know what, I'm, I'm not going to get what I need. So I would rather fill the spots with something to get a bunch of incomplete monies as opposed to getting nothing for several rounds, banking on getting something completed for the last two rounds when really I could have made more money with the incomplete. So uh, there's a lot to kind of think about there, even though the rule set is very simple and it's just a loud negotiating fun game. Um, so there you go. That's the gameplay. Thoroughly enjoy it. The time, it really just depends on your group. We did have a couple moments in our most recent play. This is my fault a little bit of trying to squeeze out more deals when it kind of seemed like the room was done. So again, I recognize that was kind of me trying to trying to make more out of something and trying to see if I can get players to bite. And some players won't. And I will say as maybe a potential gameplay negative is it, it, this game really hinges on your group. If your group is not willing to trade, uh, not willing to entertain crazy trades or, or not willing to play ball at all, then it'll kind of make the game kind of lame because it's going to be purely luck dependent at that point. If you get a lot you need, great. If you don't, you're screwed. And that can make it less fun. So I will give that kind of caveat that it can be very group dependent. And I would say the time is the same thing. If everybody's wheeling dealing real time, quick, you're going to miss out on some deals. That's going to have to be okay. You can keep the game going pretty quick. It's only six rounds, so it's not hard. Uh, also, if people aren't you know, APing over maybe... Um, you know, which cards to keep when they're drawing the building cards, that might get slowed down. But if everybody's moving quickly, you can e easily get this done in the recommended time. It says 60 minutes. I think that's pretty good. Um, four player definitely can get it on 60. Five player, eh, it might go hour 15, hour 30 because there's more deals. And I don't know, I've never played it actually three players. So getting to variety wise, I don't know that I would play it three players. I think this is best with five really good with four i don't know question mark on three i can't imagine it would be great because of you know you want to trade you want the most deals possible and a three-player game kind of seems like maybe if two players are always trading the third person's getting left out whereas four you can maybe kind of partner up one round and then partner with someone else one round and then five you can definitely make maybe a three-way deal with some group a two-way deal with the other so i think it lends itself to more of that negotiating and trading versus three player but I've not tried it so if you have let me know in the comments um, beyond that I do caution also that the game is really again hinge on the game group so you're not gonna really see anything new each time you play it you're gonna see the same tiles there's not that many different uh, businesses you're gonna pretty much go through the deck in a four player game uh, definitely a five player you won't discover any new tactics maybe you know it's really just going to be leveraging the tiles that or i'm sorry the businesses that you draw and the tiles that you draw against your opponents so you may never get what the tiles you need or the locations you need but if you can get enough of them next to your opponents while they're still getting yours and you can facilitate those trades and make it worthwhile for both of you and both get what you want so that's where the variety comes in is like the different deals that you make and what you learn from and kind of the meta of the game. If you kind of know how players are and maybe, you know, one player is particularly uh, evil and then hate drafts and tries to really, you know, extort you, then you can maybe prepare for that or try to maybe not deal with them. So that will create the stories of the game, not necessarily this new content that you're going to see with every play there's no special powers there's not any more businesses there's no expansions that i'm aware of and you have to be okay with that this is not a game i would play every week probably but it's a game that i really enjoy coming out you know maybe three four times a year because it's just a lot of fun so there you go 
that's my thoughts on it. Final rating. Uh, I'm kind of torn. I am going to have to say, uh, just because the limited variety, I'm going to have to go with a solid, oh man, let's go with an 8. I'm going to give it a solid 8, really high 8, close to a 9, 8, not quite a 9, I don't give half points, so 8 is where it stands, a really solid game, solid production, lots of fun, limited variety. Don't know about playing at three players, but four or five, if you've got a fun group that likes negotiating, this is a great gem to pick out. So there you go. Uh, let me know if you've played this game, what you thought of it. Let me know in the comments below any other trading games that you think I might like. If you've liked Chinatown or if you didn't like Chinatown, maybe let me know why. Uh, if you have any other game recommendations, again, share those below. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you on the next one.